Nine Network brings you the match of the day in League Replay. Not a good one to mark up, but flies. Oh, Ditwich, well judged. Umpire Crouch bounces the ball and comes Ditwich, gets a tap down, which things uh, the, the people don't really appreciate. Here's the high kick, goes down ground, and marked well in defence by Ditwich. Killed his favour as umpire Crouch was about to bounce once again. In there's Mike Patterson and Baldock. Uh, Ditterich, I mean. Ditterich got the tap down. Pits it across to Sheedy. Sheedy gets a left foot kick to it. Back, balls back to where it comes from the back of the pack. Ditterich, magnificent. Nick Clay, he lines him up, has a hurried shot of goal, but going out toward Ditterich, and Ditterich has marked in defence. He's going down the outer side. Oh, he's doing a hand pass now, and has gone for a big drop kick. Do this, and St Kilda still out marking Richmond, 33 to 14. That's the throw in. Ditwich is in there. He comes out with the ball, gets gets his foot to it. Comes down to Moore. Moore gets his right foot to it. Kicks over, but big Carl on his arm will go for the run. Ditwich swinging across the ground. A long shot. But in there we find Bergen. Bergen under a lot of pressure. Handballs, but it goes across to Ditwich. Ditwich finds ball up with his hand pass. Four goals have been from deliberate shots. But oh, here's a wonderful punch by Carl Ditwich. quarter, the Saints versus the Tigers. Last year's premiers leveled the scores halfway through the third quarter at 42 points each. Now St Kilda leads by 29 points. They've got a five-goal break. St Kilda 10-11, leading Richmond five goals 12. That's 71 points to 42 at the start of the final quarter. An amazing third quarter preceded this one. Carl Ditterich, the star of the game, quickly wins himself another kick. Yes, this is his 20th kick and he's taken 10 marks. Ditterich kicks the ball beautifully into the wind, which is coming up now strongly across the bay, bringing some rain with it, I fear. They tell me it's been raining at Geelong most of the afternoon. The ball is sent back on its tracks by Strang, kicks the ball into the centre of the ground. Richmond have use of the wind. Nice handball by Ian Stewart across there to Barry Breen. He kicks the ball to the centre wing on the stand side. Curran, who replaced Paddy Ganane after the first quarter. Ganane either a dislocated or a broken finger. Um, handballs it across here to, uh, to Tony Jewell. And Jewell kicks the ball upfield to the half-forward line where the mark is taken by Lilly, who got out in front of Brown, the rover is minding, and takes the mark as the back pocket player for the Saints. Richmond are using a bit of handball, but only when they get in trouble. They don't use it before they get in trouble. A one-handed punch away by Mike Perry, stopped it from going out of bounds. The marks are 52 to St Kilda, 32 to Richmond, and the free kicks are 40 to 36 in favour of Richmond. Mike Patterson won the knockdown against Barry Pascoe. It's gone out here towards Ditterich. Ditterich didn't contest the knockdown. As strong as a bullet. Still going for the ball. It's taken off him by Curran, who runs uh, sharply into Billing. The ball is taken by Tony Jewell from there. Jewell for the, um, for the Tigers. Kicks to the half-forward line. Taken here now by Sheedy, who gives it to Brown. And Brown's kick is high towards centre-half-forward. Northey waiting back, trying to uh, wrong foot trot. He's in front, and he gets pushed in the back, and it's Northey's kick. This is the secret of Northey. It's a long time since I've seen a fella that can manipulate himself into front position at the at the correct moment. This is why he gets free kick. Northey, just to the flank of centre half forward, kicking with the wind to the south road goal, which just to add confusion is at the northern end of the ground. Ten goals, 11, 71, St Kilda, Richmond 5, 12, 42. Northey will need a good kick to score with this. He's the best part of 60, maybe 65 out. There's his left foot kick falling into the goal square. A chance for Green, but the ball bounces through for a point. And the scoreboard shows 5-13, the Tigers. And the goal umpire lost his hat. I feel Richmond needed that goal. It's 30 points or 29 points. There's a big gap and time's running out. 71 to 43. We've had three minutes of play in the final quarter, and Bob Murray, with the wind springing up and blowing paper all over the place, kicks poorly. For him, that is, and the ball is, is short into the pocket. Richmond come forward through Francis Burke. It's a left foot kick. It's falling short. It bounces on the ground. I think it got past Bob Murray. It's a goal. Well, Richmond are back in the game now. This is a strong breeze. I've just been talking to the people in front of us, and they estimated that it's at least a three or four goal breeze. And Kildra are, as I see it now, in a bit of trouble. Well, it's good trouble to have when you're leading 71 to 49. Helen Killigrew comments on Channel 9. It's four minutes now into the final turn. A poor attempted knock away there by Mike Green. The ball was picked up by Bartlett the Rover. Rain is starting to fall. It's been threatening for the last um, 30 minutes or so. It's onto the far wing. Chasing it is Moran. Moran versus... Uh, There's a whole pack of players and there's a hole up here as Moran in possession of the ball is going to take the kick. 
Moran's kick up towards the half forward line. Attempt to mark by Neal. Coming out of it with a dazzling Darrell. Ball Bock gets it up towards the half forward line looking for Kennedy. The two number 11, Bowden and Kennedy, let the ball go across the line. Goal kick is for Richmond, Ganeen, Moore, Bowden, Burke and Brown. For St Kilda, three to Barry Pascoe and three to Kevin Neal and one each to Davis, Ditterich, Baldock, Smith and Bonning. Good knock by Mike Green. Goes out towards uh, Strang, the umpire says play on, the ball's picked up by uh, Mike Perry. Goes down towards the centre wing, Barry Pascoe trying to get the ball, he's kept it in play all the way along there. Good play, he's pushed in the back by North, the umpire says play on, and again Pascoe's got it. He gets his left foot to it, but he's tackled by a play. Good play, Pascoe, although he went the wrong way. The South Australians watching this telecast through NWS 9 will be interested in the Pascoe brothers' performance, particularly Barry Pascoe, who's been a star of the game. Yes, that Barry is developing into an excellent player, and we're all pleased because we know he can play. He's had 15 kicks, 6 marks, and then he kicked 3 goals. Ball is taken by Francis Burke, very lethargic, but he gets it out towards Tony Jewell, who is now on the ball. He comes down towards Barry Pascoe, Patterson, there's Dittrich with it. He's the best player on the ground. He kicks up towards the centre wing position over the head of uh, Burke. And I'll give you Carl Dittrich's statistics. He's had 21 kicks and he's taken 10 marks. Green is number 37 and Bob Pascoe is number 31. Green won the knockdown, but it's sharked by the St Kilda Rover, Ross Smith. The Brownlow medalist walked beautifully the first time, then ducked his head and ran into trouble the second time, and the man who collared him was Sheedy, but grabbed him too high, evidently. And it's a free kick to Ross Smith against Sheedy. Sheedy's a good name in Australian football. The West Australian Rover, Sheedy, Jack Sheedy, is regarded as one of the all-time greats. The ball is number the half-forward line. That's a mark for St Kilda. Ross Smith getting a dividend from his kick. He finds Bob Pascoe. Big Bob has uh, certainly not been the performer in this game that his brother has. Kicks well over the half-forward line into the full-forward pocket. Spoilt marked by Green, picked up by Strang. Strang for the Richmond team, kicks the centre half-forward. The wind's helping Richmond a lot. They'll need to capitalise on it better. They're being held out by the backs, including Colling. And over there to Barry Pascoe. And kill the backs are doing well. Bowden grabs one. But the backing up by Colling is good, and he helps his partner out when he's in distress. And the ball is kicked right onto the line towards Bonnie, where it's out of play. Conceding the point that the players must be getting tired, but all of a sudden everybody wants to bounce it. I can't see the sense in it. Mike Green, but it's Bob Pascoe who nearly won the knockdown. Number six is Curran, kicked off the ground by Bonnie. Has a chance for Billing, burst his way through the pack, gets his right foot to it. Over towards the forward pocket, there's Bowden of Richmond leading in the race for the ball, snaps it out of the air. Banders down towards the centre wing, where we see Bartlett grab the ball. He's tackled there by Moran. Bartlett gets it, circles around, kicks down towards the half-forward line. There's a chance for Patterson, but waiting in the back is the big boy himself. Check his statistics again. 11 marks, 22 kicks. Ditterich to the defence wing, right into the crowd. Very good, very good play. This fellow's maturing, there's no doubt about that. At the moment, he's the best footballer in this town. A throw in right in front of the clock on the scoreboard wing. Green again against Bob Pascoe and they tumble over. Nobody did much and the ball was, was taken by Moran. He kicked the ball high. It's going in fact uh, Richmond's way. It's onto the half forward line for the Richmond team now. The wind helping it all the time. Not when it's on the ground. However, it's rescued by St Kilda's back men. The ball has gone onto the half forward line. The battle now is to Baldock. Baldock picks the ball up. It's grabbed high by Mike Perry. It's his free kick. He knows it. He'll play on. With sticky tape hanging to his injured right eye, Baldock kicks the ball into the full forward pocket. Pick up here by uh, by Bonnie, and it's a goal. That was the one St Kilda wanted. I think I was talking a little bit like a coach before. When you're coaching sides, you always worry. At this stage of the game, I think that one could make all the difference, relieve the pressure from St Kilda, and they should float on now. We're nearly eight minutes into the last quarter, and that's the scoreboard. It's a pretty handy lead, although as Alan Killigrew has mentioned, it's a very strong win that Richmond had the advantage of. But for missed chances in the first quarter, I think Richmond would have been ahead. However, St Kilda led by nine points at the first change, 23 at half time, 29 at three quarter. The ball is onto the half forward line. It's Baldock waiting down for it, but uh, not getting an opportunity because redheaded Mike Perry charges through and kicks the ball to the half forward line. The wind is an aid to Richmond, but their back men seem to be, uh, uh, their forwards don't seem to be equal to the St Kilda back men. Case in point, Barry Breen wins another kick. Must be depressing the Tigers. They're trying to win the ball. They're certainly being helped by the wind, but they're not able to do much with it. And again, the draw goes against them with Lilly taking a mark on the back line. 77 points to 49. 28 points is the difference between the sides with St Kilda playing at home, well in command of the game at the moment. This is 
Bergen. Oh, close to being a throw. He's bumped, but the kick is gone. It's on its way to the half-forward line. Play very nearly marked. Has the ball taken off him by Breen. Breen's hand pass goes to Trot. The ball is now taken by Brown. Kick mid-air. Stoops down for it. He's got it again. Threw it out there in front of him. The umpire was unsighted. There's a free kick now going. Billy Brown is getting the kick. He's lucky. Yep. The umpire ruled that he was pushed in the back with that dump. Reverse to what we said before. Everybody wants to bounce the ball. They're all trying to be tricky. What what Richmond want now is for their kicks to cover distance into people. Barry Richardson about to be taken off the field, I think, and uh, after the kick goes on its way, it's only one point. He's being replaced by number 35, 20th man on for the Tigers. His name is Campbell. Blair Campbell, who was uh, a top recruit a couple of years ago, but unfortunately had a very bad knee injury and he didn't play football at all last year. Full complement of reserves on for the Tigers. They're really in trouble. The ball onto the half forward line. They're battling to get goals. Oh, bad luck for them that it wasn't knocked forward then by Jewell. It uh, rebounded off uh, an opposition player. Picked up by Curran over there towards Sheedy. Sheedy bounced on the ball, but it's gone. Strang, Strang. Bob Pasco, hand pass. Picked up by Bartlett. Bartlett desperately trying to be creative. Slippery turf now. Had a couple of bounces. Left foot kicked by him, a solo it. But he gets no points. I can't follow any defender that has a ball and then goes for a run and wants to bounce it. You're in trouble. You're defending. Get your kick. 27 points the difference. The Saints in front. We've had now 10 minutes of play. There's only 20 minutes of play left. And the Tigers are 27 points down. Good knock by pa And it's a point knocked through by Patterson. Takes them to 6-15. Incidentally, Sheedy has had 17 kicks in the centre against Ian Stewart's 14, but Bartlett has had more kicks than the other Richmond player. He's had 18. That wind's pretty strong. You have a look what it's doing down there to all those papers. You can tell by the, the goal umpire's coast too as Murray's kick goes up into the air and the wind grabs hold of it and pulls it up like a brick wall. But as Dinerich, great player today, one of the best performances I've seen from this fellow. And of course his effort against Collingwood last week was also monumental. The ball is onto the half-back line, now it's onto the half-forward line with Ross Smith playing heady football as usual. It's over towards Cowboy Neal, don't know where they've got him playing now. He's kicked a couple of goals. The ball is kicked into the full forward pocket by him, but now it's coming back with the wind uh, at least 15 yards. It, it, it came back in its flight and the ball is marked there by, by Beal. 12 minutes into the final quarter at 77 points to 51. St Kilda in front by 26 points. The Tigers winning the ball up onto the forward line. Punched away by Bob Murray from Moore. Moore tries to make up for it now, but Lily's got the ball out there across the half-back line, and it's a throw-in the next thing. 77 points to 51. I think Kennedy is full forward for St Kilda. And uh, Big Neal would be out in the half-forward flank, and probably having a run at the ball, on the ball after, and they can use him, because Dittrich is their only real ruckman. Stewart picked the ball up, kicked it wide to that half-forward flank, looking for balled up, and it's uh, over the line once more. We're nearly 12 minutes into this last quarter, 11-11 to 6-15. That's a lead of 26 points that St Kilda have. O'Donnell against Patterson. Patterson edged him out, which is a good play, but there's Stewart lurking behind, but he's not playing with a customary brilliance that we know that he's got. Here he is using his guile to get out of trouble. He bounces, kicks it high in the air, looking for that boundary line, and it's across it. They're trying to waste a bit of time, St Kilda, instead of playing the football that they have been playing, particularly in the third quarter. 26 points of difference, St Kilda in front. We're well into the final quarter now. Patterson, hand pass, intercepted, and St Kilda come forward. They're kicking into the wind, it's into the pull forward pocket, still 40 yards from goal. Walsh, a nice hand pass over there to Bowden. His left-handed hand pass is to Strang. He's grabbed by Bonnie, runs right into him. Cleverly, however, gets a hand pass out there to a teammate. The ball is onto the forward line again. Attempted mark by Barry Breen. It was a high flyer, but didn't come off. Again, Richmond come forward with tenacity, but not as much purpose as before. Bad luck for Northey that he didn't get the tap down and run on with the ball. It's come out to Colling. Colling on the half-back line will relieve that forward thrust by the Tigers, but he holds out to an opposition player on the wing. It's Francis Burke, one of the best players in the Richmond side this year. A left, uh, left foot circling motion onto the half forward line is towards Northey this should be constructive Northey is run down by Trot gives it over the Sheedy back to Northey Northey um, ducks his way through two who are trying to sandwich him has a kick for the sticks but I think it's only one flag bad luck for the Tigers Northey taking part in a good um, a good piece of play out there he's an elusive intelligent player and has to be watched all day long 
take your eye off him, they've got a goal. It wasn't that good play by Sheedy, and incidentally, Norby has kicked four behind for Richmond without kicking a goal. Of course, Richmond have kicked six, 16, 22 scoring shots, the same as St Kilda, who are 11 11. So when you've got uh, the same number of scoring shots as the wind grabbing hold of this ball, but Dittrich is there and hugs it to his chest. Mark number 13 for Dittrich, kick number 24. There's Dittrich's kick. We'll find the boundary line. As you say, Alan, he's matured, all right? He's wasting this time. I think he's a better player since he got his hair cut. He's the opposite to Samson. 11-11, 77 to 6-16-52 at the 15-minute mark in this last quarter. Statistics by Warwick Unsworth. It's Channel 9 at the big game, and John O'Donnell again, a spring heel jack, but he didn't make contact with the ball. It's taken by Neil. A little slow in getting rid of it, I thought. Neil pays a penalty. Yes, he handballed it out of bounds, and you just can't do it. Crowd says free kick to Richmond. Fair enough in my book. Neil had all day. Francis Burke will take the kick. He's one of the tall and speedy Richmond wingers. On the opposite flank is Dick Clay. This is Burke's 19th kick for the game. Burke kicking to centre half forward. Moore was up high, but did reach up higher than him. His performances today have been like the Empire State. Here's his kick to the half-back flank. Again, it's out into the crowd. I think Dittrich will finish up with leather poisoning. No worries, he's handled our ball that much. <laughs> he's got to be crook, son. <laughs> he's, he's, he's had 14 marks, and the last three kicks he's had, Alan, have all gone over the boundary line and out of bounds. Fair enough. What do you mean, fair enough? He's playing for St Kilda. This is the, the rules that you're always talking about. If they give it a free kick, the rule would make the decision. Why put the onus on the umpire to decide what he's doing? Picked a up, ridiculous rule. Picked up by Ian Stewart, up towards Baldock. Trying to pick it up on his way through was uh, Billing, but it comes out to Strang. Strang gets it down towards the centre wing. Oh, a chance for O'Donnell. But he uh, messed it as Francis Burt. Oh, he's dragged to the ground. Play on, says the umpire. Coming in there for Richmond uh, was uh, Bartlett. He's bundled out of the road. It goes across to Billy Brown. Brown gets it down towards the full forward position. And the one-handed mark, no, says the umpire. He wouldn't allow it. Blair Campbell's got it. Kicked it off the ground and Billy Burt his way through the head. Had it not been for Ditterich's barrel chest, that ball would have been a goal. Throw in, full forward pocket, number 10 is conspicuous. He's all over the field. He's against Green here, number 37. Ditterich tried to drag it out of the air. Shot is hurt. Cramp in the right leg. As umpire Jeff Crouch, the senior man on the VFL panel, bounces the ball right in the full forward pocket at the Richmond goals. Colling clears the ball right across the sticks and again into the crowd. It's in the other pocket this time. Time, of course, as it is wanton to, is ticking away. It's 17 minutes gone in the final quarter and uh, St Kilda look uh, certain to win this game. Green against Bob Pascoe. Taken away by Tony Jewell. Runs into all sorts of trouble. The umpire says play on. Blair Campbell's got a drag to the ground. The umpire says holding the ball. In other words, it's sudden death and the ball is kicked by St Kilda at the halfback line. Barry Pascoe down from the forward line, falls all over himself. It was a gallant attempt to try and accept the mark. The ball is kicked out by Ross Smith and again St Kilda doing well in defence. Yes, they're, I think that it, everybody's tired. I think they could just tighten on their men a bit. There's a few loose Richmond players sculling about. Bob Pascoe versus Patterson and Patterson beat Pascoe for the ball. Pascoe's, however, gone in bravely and got hold of it now. He was grabbed when not in position. Oh. Well, why did he whistle it up so quickly? It was being constructive, and it looked like St Kilda were going to get the ball away from the pack. It was uh, Pasco that time knocking it down. Uh, Stewart and uh, Ross Smith of that side clashed. They lost the ball, and now it's gone to Curran, who kicks it out of play. <laughs> Brought on Brian Minot, fresh into the ruck. A good tactical move by the Saints. Yes, it's been uh, pretty obvious for a while that they need a bigger fella to go with Patterson. Tony Jewell takes it, has a shot for goal, and he scored one more point for the Tigers to take them to 6-17. The Tigers uh, really need some uh, revitalization in the ruck because Mike Patterson's on one leg. Look at him limping there with Minot, uh, who's just come on as fresh as a daisy. Minot number two. Despite Dittridge's magnificent game, Patterson has played well from the actual throw-ins and the bounces, and the other St Kilda ruckmen, apart from, from Dittridge, haven't been able to go with him. It's a good kick by Bob Murray. Big fellas go for it. Patterson tried to mark. He's trying hard. Tony Jewell. Good around the pack. 
Just his kick now towards the four line, bounces over the head, but Dietrich is there to knock the ball away. He does this, but it's out towards Moore. Dietrich is there, Strockers is picked up by Moore. His kick is smothered. Blair Campbell has it, but the boundary umpire says, I want it. 77 to 53. 24 points the difference in the scores and only 12 minutes left. Two points every minute for uh, Richmond to drag this game out of the fire. Four quick goals they need. And we are nearly 19 minutes into the last quarter. There's Brian Minot coming in this two-handed punch and he's knocked it across the line to waste some more time and the rain is getting a little bit more heavy all the time which will make it more difficult for Richmond to get up in this last 10 minutes of play. High over the top was O'Donnell. He knocked it out, but it's taken away by Lilly. There's uh, Kevin Barthes caught with the ball. The umpire says that you made no attempt to get rid of it. A free kick against Barthes. And he's been very consistent with his rule today. He has umpired particularly well. I agree with you. If the rule's there, it's got to be kept. I can't understand how people try to umpire a game without and ignore a rule. If it's there, it's got to be applied. Player with the ball was Ian Stewart. Kicking it wide to the wing. No mark because the boundary umpire says it's his. We are 20 minutes into this last quarter. It's 11 11 77. St Kilda, Richmond, 6 17 53. It's four clear goals the difference. Chance for St Kilda picked up by Colling. Picked it up the wing and it's marked by Graham Bergen. He turns and plays on. He's kicked it high to under full forward position. Barry Pascoe missed it, but Eric Moore picked it up and off the pack out towards Phil Brown. And uh, trying to keep the ball in play there was Lilly. Now says the umpire, good piece of football. And there we see the Pascoe brothers. This time it's Barry Pascoe. Kick it over the boundary line. I notice that Ditwich has gone into a forward pocket. And the Bob Pascoe has come back to play a loose man, a kick behind the play in an endeavour to keep the Tigers out. Good thinking. The reason Ditwich would be off the ball is because he's limpy. Francis Kirk and goes across the line once more. Another throw in, 37 is Green, 2 is Minot. Kicked high in the air there by Barry Pasco. A chance for Dick Clay, he hugs it to his chest, he's 60, 70 yards out, but he'll pull it well up into the scoring zone. 21 minutes have ticked by, and if Clay can put this well into the square, or even better, Oh, it's a poor kick, and it's out of bounds. You know, again, I think I was worrying unnecessarily about St Kilda. Goals are like runs in cricket. When you've got them on the scoreboard, you've got them, and they've got to get them. And this is a lot, dip, a lot harder to do, particularly on a wet day and under windy conditions. It's hard to kick goals. Throw in, close to the Richmond goal. Minot is there once more. Blair Campbell is pushed out of the road. Blair Campbell is smothered, and he could get a free kick here. I think he could. I think he's got to get one. Fair enough. Fair enough. St Kilda defenders are desperate. These things happen when people get tired and are desperate. The play is on. The umpire says you can't do it because time on had been signalled. Now he puts his hand in the air, which means that he can run around if he wants to now, but in the meantime, of course, St Kilda have got this move covered. He does run around. A left foot snap by Blair Campbell, and he's kicked a goal. A valuable one for Richmond. back that every or at least every Richmond supporter is hoping for. Three goals the difference now in favour of St Kilda and we are 23 minutes into this last quarter. 11-11 to 7-17 and the umbrellas are up at Moravia. Getting very dark and I might look it on your picture. Picking the ball up and picking up the forward line was Neil. Oh, picked up by Mike Perry. Bunnell ball knock out of the road. Attempted mark by Northey. St Kilda having trouble picking the ball up. Green kicks it out wide to the wing. A chance for St Kilda. And it's uh, Barry Pasco made great. No, it wasn't. It was Jeff Moran. Moran has it on the centre wing. Gets the lead coming out there from uh, O'Donnell. O'Donnell steadies. Kicks it up towards the half forward line. They're playing with a lot of system. And there's three passes in a row. This time he's found Cowboy Neal. And uh, he's taking his time. A little bit of experience there. It's 23 and a half minutes gone in this last quarter now. There's Neil's kick. The wind grabs it, makes it fall short a bit. Oh, how was that for a mark? That was a magnificent effort. <laughs> I'm not quite sure who was holding who, but 
Baldock finished up marking the ball one-handed and he's about five inches shorter than the fellow he was against. There's the kick by Baldock, well up in front of goal. Bonnie trying to pick it up, Walsh comes in. Now it goes out to Davis, he's pushed in the back, the umpire's got the whistle in the mouth, he said, I will ball it up. Three goals the difference in favour of the Saints as we're 24 minutes into this last quarter. Mike Green knocks it down, it's going out towards Billing, but Davis picks it up, he gets rid of the ball. This is a, a good player, Bartlett, steady, kicks it down towards the centre of the grounds again for Dick Clay, gets it to his chest, good wet weather football because it's raining out there. Dick Clay drives it down towards the half forward line, a chance for Lilly, taps it along the carpet in front of him. Oh, he'll have to hurry, he gets his kick wide to the half forward line and he's found Cowboy Neal again. That was real good strong play on, on the part of the St Kilda defence. Neal bobs it right up onto the half forward flank where it comes in and the Richmond player tries for it, misses it, it comes to the ground and Crouch will ball the ball up. It's on the half forward flank, we're 24 minutes into this last quarter and R Richmond are trailing by three goals. It's 11-11 to 7-17 and there's St Kilda coming again, Ross Smith. Took the hand pass from O'Donnell. Kicks it up and look at the wind grab hold of it and drag it back so much so that Mike Perry couldn't even mark it. He was in a better position. Out to the pack comes uh, Bartlett. I thought he'd get a free kick. Now says the umpire and Crouch let that go a little bit too far. We are now just about to enter the time one period. We could have five minutes to go. Richmond needs three goals and there's Perry sending the ball down towards the half forward line. Oh, Strang came out of the air, pushed the player out of the road with his open hand and that's quite legitimate. And there's Big Carl. Well, Carl must have recovered from his injury because he's back on that back line playing the kick behind the play and once again has held the Tigers out. He's had 25 kicks and he's taken 15 marks. But this time he's held out to Francis Burke. Waiting for Burke now. I know he's a left foot kick. This fellow's had a good day in the wing. He's had 20 kicks. There's his kick down towards the half forward line. Brown is there as a chance for Northey, but he's running into Dittrich and Dittrich is coming through. They're all getting out of his road. I don't blame them. Jeff Moran has it, gives it across to Dittrich, kick 26 for Dittrich, up towards half forward line, Strang nearly got it, he goes over towards Neil. Neil will have to steady, handballs it across and tipping in. Here's Mike Perry, Perry has the ball, kicks it down towards uh, Bowden, Bowden was there, but uh, chance for Moran, Bowden's caught with it, he handballs it, there was some killer player in the person of Barry Pascoe, who gets rid of the ball, the umpire says play on. Francis Burke once more, kicks it down the half forward line and a good mark taken by Blair Campbell who just came on the ground ten minutes ago, he's already kicked a goal. There's the kick by Campbell, the wind gets hold of it and he didn't allow for this, he should have given Richmond a chance. We've played one minute of time on. Well St Kilda have certainly learned how to play this Moravan ground by forcing the ball out onto the outer wing it makes it virtually impossible for the Tigers to kick a goal when coming in from that angle. Minor. Oh. Oh. The that was a, a very bad miss on, on Sheedy's part and also it was not good play on Minot's face. If you can't find your own rover, for goodness sake, don't find theirs. I think you're a bit hard on Sheedy, a bad miss. He almost hit them behind. All right, well, I could give you a football lesson. All he had to do was take four steps towards the centre of the ground. He opens up the goal. Yeah, that's gets elementary. Cool There's it. no one within between here and Burke Street. Kitterick, great mark. Oh. He gives it across the line to his teammate in Breen. And Dittrich is starring like nobody I've seen before in a football match. Any player that can take 16 marks and have 27 kicks for a Ruckman is a fantastic performance. And this is what Carl Dittrich has done. That point incidentally has lowered the advantage down to 17 points. There's Brian Minot, fresh Ruckman, getting the ball out to Neil, but Burke is there for Richmond. She's played a great game for Richmond, Burke. Gets it down towards the half forward line. The ball is knocked away and it's going out towards Ian Stewart. He'll have to hurry. Gets his kick down towards the half forward line. Knocked away by Mike Perry. It's coming out towards Billing. He's having trouble picking the ball up. Brown has got it. No. The umpire Kraut will ball it up. We have played for two and a half minutes into the time on period. I thought that Big Carl disdained to chase that last one. I think he's sick of kicking. There's the kick up towards the forward line by Neil. Given across by Walsh. Kick off the ground there by uh, Tony Jewell. It comes out towards Curran, Curran picks it up, short pass is down towards the lead from Sheedy, there's plenty of Richmond players here, Sheedy has it, kicks it blindly down towards the half forward line, it's going towards uh, Moore, bounced off his knees, now he's going to have trouble picking up, it's getting very slippery, good play by Moore, his left foot kicks going down towards Blair Campbell, but the ball will beat him, he marked it alright, but he was across the line. From the half forward line for Richmond, 29 minutes have already gone in this last quarter, and he's still the lead by 17 points. And I think that the clock is going to beat Richmond here today. 
Minot knocks it high on hard. Curran tries to get away, but it's being skewer taking it out of trouble. Drives up towards the half forward line. He's looking for Davis. The strings got too much pace for Davis. Beat him to it. The Shepherd to let his own player and the person of Beale get it. Beale left puts it back towards the centre wing. Stewart will get to the ball and will mark it and will steady everything and take his time. I'm quite confident that Stewart will play very well within a fortnight. He's sort of uh, lacking confidence, but he's still winning the ball. This is his 21st kick, a short pass to Baldock. He's still thinking. This is Darrell taking his time. Baldock's incidentally had 19 kicks for the game. Well, he's played pretty well. Short pass towards the half forward line is knocked away. Stewart's suffering from cramps, incidentally, in both legs. He's been knocked around a bit during the game. He's having that period where every time he goes, he runs into an elbow, but he'll play his way out of it. The signs are there. Minor, the beautiful knock. But it's a chance for Jeff Strang. He's having trouble picking the ball up. He's kept by Threes and killed the players. Got away with it. Billy Brown has the ball in front of him. He's having trouble picking it up. Minor's going to get him as he gets his kick. Brown down towards the half-forward line. A chance for Blair Campbell. No, says the umpire. No mark. Tipping in to pick the ball up there is Carl Dittrich. Kick number 28. Out towards Baldock. Baldock mark. The mark show that St Kilda have taken 58 to Richmond 41. St Kilda have also played better together. They've used the more intelligent handball and combined on the forward line. Up goes uh, Baldock. Kicks towards centre half forward. Where in comes Neil and he's marked. It was a very good strong mark. The type that he takes... Every time they pop it up to him in that particular angle, he'll grab the ball. He's at centre-half board and will drive it up into the teeth of gold. It's a good kick and it goes right up into the ten yard line where o o O'Donnell can't mark it and there's to be a ball up. No, one point. At one point. So that takes them back to the three goals lead that they enjoyed. We've played for 30 minutes into this last quarter. That's the scoreboard, St Kilda 11-12, Richmond 7-18. The three kicks show that St Kilda have had 36 and Richmond have had 38. It's down towards the centre of the ground and the mark has been taken by Breen. And so, so matured as Dittridge these days that he's starting to steady people down. He's starting to think, no worry. There's a kick by Breen out towards the half-forward line and Collingwood have lost their fourth game in a row. It's up on the scoreboard. Good play by Brian Minot. Gee, fancy having him as a 19th man to come onto the field. It's up towards the half-forward line, nobody can mark it. Tipping through his ball lock, he's pushed out of the road. The umpire said he was pushed in the back, a free kick to ball lock, and he's 40 yards out. Ball lock gets an extraordinary amount of kicks through being pulled over the head and over the shoulder, and the reason for this would be that he, he runs close to the ground, he anticipates people grabbing, and he, and he sort of goes closer to the ground. They grab him over the head, it's a free kick. There's ball lock kick right up into the goal square. Goal, goal. Well, that's the sausage roll that's thrown it up. Make no mistake about it. There hasn't been any real doubt about this game for 20 minutes. If there was, well, it's just gone down the drain right now with that goal from da the dazzling Darrell Baldo. St Kilda, 12 goals, 12. Three goals to Barry Pascoe and Neal. Two to Bonnie, one each to Smith, Baldock, Ditterich and Davis. And uh, Richmond, uh, seven goals, 18. Two goals to Brown and one each to Campbell, Burke, Moore and, Moore and Ganeen. That's the final siren. And the scoreboard says that St Kilda at 12-12, Richmond 7-18. And there's the star of the match, Carl Diderich. And his statistics show that he had 28 kicks and took 15 marks.